Anyway, guys, the man responsible for the killing of Chris Hani back in 1993, Mr. Yanus Valush, is back at the Constitutional Court to ask uh, the Constitutional Court to relook at the findings or the decision taken by Ronald Lamola, Minister of Justice, by denying him parole. He wants them to look at them and declare that he didn't actually follow the right procedure by doing so. His main thing is to be granted uh, parole. Now, this is what his lawyer said to say. The murder was a deliberate, cold-blooded one. The act was cowardly in the extreme. It was preceded by weeks of planning. The deceased was failed in front of his own residence when he was completely defenseless. And as I showed earlier on, none of the accused has showed any remorse. That was in 1993. <clears throat> of course, we know, uh, acting chief justice and justices, that uh, 20 years later, uh, in May 2013, the uh, applicant started showing some remorse by writing a letter uh, to Mrs. Han. Uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal went on to say that in cases of this sort, the elements of retribution and deterrence naturally come to the fore. In regard to the latter factors, the then judge president of Gauteng, uh, Justice Ilof, had this to say, and I quote, as a deterrent, I wish in imposing the sentence which I have in mind to send out the message loud and clear to anyone who contemplates assassination of political leaders as an acceptable option, what the Now, uh, Ms. Honey lost uh, the love of uh, the love of her life back in 1993. This man has now spent close to 29 years in prison, more than Nelson Mandela has spent. Now, there's never been a time where he came and said, I'm going to tell you everything that has happened. The planning, the execution, who sent us, who started this, the group, who's behind this. Like the full story regarding what happened. He's never taken a stand or he's never sat there and said, this is what I'm going to do. This is South Africa. Each and every country has its own laws and way of doing things. But such things, if they happen somewhere else, we were talking about uh, a long sentence without even the possibility of parole. Now here we have uh, this man who has decided to take the life of Chris Hani even before he could see freedom. You know how, how much it hurts for Chris Hani to fight for the freedom that we enjoy today. And at the last minute, before he could even go and enjoy that freedom, the family loses him. They never get to sit there with him and say, this is what you fought for. This man denied South Africa a great leader. Who knows what, what could have happened by now if we had people like Chris Hani. The road we see today wouldn't have been like this. Now, he took the life of Chris Hani. But he wants the Constitutional Court to have mercy on him and give him parole. On top of that, nothing much has been done. What happened? The wounds are still there. In 2013, he tried, he wrote a letter to Ms. Hani to ask for forgiveness. But Ms. Hani refuses to engage with this man. Everyone would refuse to engage with someone who took uh, the love of your life, the, uh, the, love, the life of the love of your life, sorry. Now, it's not an easy thing for... I just want to startle 
the court. But what I want to tapping. focus on is the fact that today, this man requesting parole, and when he's been denied, he jumps, he is fighting for his freedom. What freedom, sir? We could have had a good leader by now. Look what the ANC is doing to us. Anyway, let's continue. To its emotion, we start with Mr. Hani's views himself of this cry. How prophetic. He says, I have never wanted to spare myself <clears throat> because I feel that there are people who are no longer around and who died for the struggle. What right do I have to hold back, to rest, to preserve my health, to have time with my family when there are other people who are no longer alive, when they sacrificed what is precious, namely life itself. I close it to make this point. And I'm not trying to scare the court. If Mr. and I start with the nature of the crime, if the applicant's crime had achieved its most ultimate objective, mm -hmm. this court would not be sitting today. This, this very court to which he now applies would not exist because the nature of this crime is described in the sentencing judgment by ill of um, JP. He explains precisely what it is and he explains as such. He says, and this is found at volume two, he says, very few, I mean, few crimes can be regarded by a court as more atrocious or as being more calculated to arouse the revulsion of decent members of society than the sort of murder of which the appellants were duly convicted. The trial court ultimately concluded that in the case of each appellant, the death penalty was the only proper penalty. Mr. Walush is probably is around his 60s, early, late, I'm not sure. But Hani never lived to see 2010 World Cup. Hani never lived to see his grandchildren growing. He was taken before that. Now, sir, uh, you need parole as we speak. But then we look at the fact that South Africa has not healed from the fact that nothing has been said. I agree with uh, the second lawyer, Sikaka, and what he's saying. Because... So what we act, have here is we have an open... There shouldn't be apology for such act. That is political, treasonous. Yeah, murder happens every time. Uh, people get parole, but we're talking about something. He actually said there that... If the motive for this crime had been achieved, this court wouldn't be like this. Mr. Zondo, and we I, we know you, you got grilled the other day, but he wouldn't be here. Madlanga wouldn't be here. And this lady is beautiful. She wouldn't be here also. Okay, let's continue. The ended situation where the applicant is never going to know whether he's ever going to get parole. And he cannot do anything to change his circumstances. And that is cruel and inhumane and degrading punishment. That's what the court case is saying. So in the light of that, I submit to you and I request you not to refer the matter back to the minister. If, however, you should decide to refer the matter back to the minister, we submit that you should place the minister on terms to make a further decision within a specific period. And that you should also order that if there is any challenge to that decision, that this court can be approached directly. They don't want uh, the matter to be referred to uh, Ronald Lamola because they know he's gonna say again, no parole. But then the bigger issue here is actually what people like Julius Malema the other day were saying that 
a big crime was committed against the black people during apartheid and people go on with life as if nothing happened you know some wounds don't heal and apartheid wounds they are not gonna heal anytime soon the reason there are reasons like this where this guy is asking for parole knowing very well the big the big crime he committed and he's continuing asking for it going to the constitutional court this is why most of the people never never heal from uh, the pain that they were inflicted because the perpetrators they find it in them to to ex exercise their rights we don't know what the decision will be but in all fairness until mr walush uh, yanush walush tells us what really happened they should think about it again thank you for watching guys until next time cheers